Hello, and welcome to our AI Lab Hot Item. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Axel Voss, member of the European Parliament for Germany in the EPP Group. MEP Voss is EPP Coordinator for the Committee on Legal Affairs, as well as Deputy Member of the Committee on Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs. And from 2020 to 2022, member and rapporteur in the Special Committee on Artificial Intelligence. The reason? A recent Politico item reporting that MEP Voss intends to gather stakeholders in mid-April to discuss practical solutions for both AI developers and the creative sector. Let's hear what Axel has to say. Hello to everyone. Thanks um, once again also for the opportunity here to talk to you. And uh, it's about AI, it's about the problems, the upcoming problems of AI. And uh, so we finished this month the AI Act. And uh, we have seen in all our negotiations and discussions that there are some leftovers, especially, um, of course, to fill the AI Act with life. But also when we talked about generative AI, and the so-called foundational models, um, et cetera. So there we have seen that there is a kind of a big problem still lying ahead of for us. So that's why um, if I have, or when I had seen five years ago the situation about the copyright or creative sector and the normal social media platforms and big massive upload platforms, there has been an imbalance after long, long years of not doing here something. This is what I had in mind when I um, try to invite now the creative sector and also the AI developers together to have a kind of an exchange at the first time on the 15th of April for um, trying to figure out what problems are on both sides. Um, of course, the copyright problem has been already discussed in a way five years ago, but now we have a new technology in place and there once again this problem occurs once again. And there we should wait for the imbalance situation. And it's not only what we have in mind with music and movies and also in, in written form authors performers, also newspapers. So what we are saying are neighboring rights or relevant to copyrights. This is something what we should have in mind because everything now can be done in seconds by robots. That's why we need to solve here the problem, not only for the press publishers, but also for the whole creative sector. The um, What I still have in mind is that we have on the 15th of April the kind of a kick-off um, event in trying to find out what are the problems for the creative sector in every sector of the creative sector and also then trying also to talk to the AI developers how they are seeing this and what problems they might have in um, we are fulfilling the aspect or the obligation of copyright. And of course, what personally I have in mind is at first, um, technology can't, um, yeah, can't just ignore uh, existing laws, even if there is a new technology in place. And on the other hand, we should also have in mind that existing laws are should not hindering yeah, new tech, new developments or new um, technology and so on. So, therefore, we need a kind of a balance here. And this is why I think we have actually to try to find at the end a pragmatic solution. But um, if this is then necessary, also it should be somehow legally um, binding in a way, but at first it's necessary to have a kind of a pragmatic solution for both sides. And uh, that's why we need these ideas, what is feasible on 
the technology, what, what can be done, what um, might be a kind of a problem if we are thinking about to respect copyright from the beginning. It might be uh, critical to the um, developer AI side uh, to say, oh, what is copyright protected? How we can detect these by machines? What, uh, who is behind the copyright? Who's the copyright holder? And um, that's why there might occur kind of a, a problem how to do this uh, tech, yeah, driven by technology, machine readable. These are worldwide uh, working AI systems and uh, Europe is only one part of all these um, situations. So they are facing a lot of times around the world. but. There shouldn't be a kind um, of a problem for them to use these AI systems and uh, therefore uh, we, we need to find a way forward. On the other side, we have the creative sector, what is very important. And uh, therefore, we need to know exactly what problems they might have. Is this a kind of an out uh, input question at first, if they are training their algorithms with already copyright protected works and what does this mean? Um, secondly, if they do not want to uh, see their material trained for their algorithms, how to protect uh, these uh, copyright uh, protected works or these copyright related works. And um, also there must be a question if we are coming to remuneration, how can this be um, start uh, directly and how they can discover these and how we can manage these in a machine readable way and in seconds so that we have a kind of a lifetime and nothing is hindering at the end the output. So the question of input and output is playing a role if this has to be remunerated or how far we can go and then let this happen and so on. And there might be also the question about the different systems of copyright uh, regimes, what we have or what we are seeing in the EU. We have more than less three different um, copyright systems and uh, there the aspect of aligning these systems might play a role. And um, another question occurs to me also, if we have globally acting machines already, should there be a kind of a global approach to it? Meaning also we are inviting some of our like-minded friends in the world so that we have not only the commission on board, um, that we, they also can hear along to this, uh, what they have in mind and also what they would love. They can listen in, in a kind of a consultation way or whatever it is. And um, that we are also asking our international friends. So the transatlantic system might play a role um, if we're coming to Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Japan, and so on. Um, also the like-minded friends that we have also to think about if there is a way in aligning some aspects of copyright in the interest of the AI developers. Also, what I mentioned on the EU level, um, that we have to align some aspects of the national existing copyright systems. And so this is also what we should probably try in this yeah, international dimension. Also having in mind um, there is WIPO from Geneva, there is OECD, and there is the G7 process also coming with the generative AI development. So we have a lot of issues to align. This should be a starting point and it should be um, at first produce some ideas or problems what a legislator or a moderator or however you're seeing this might be helpful with what needs to be solved. Um, thank you, Abby Pivos. I think that that was a very um, 
complete overview of what you're trying to achieve. You might need more than a lifetime to get there. <laughs> There's a lot of aligning that needs to happen, it seems. Um, I was going to say, maybe you should just get everyone around the table and organize a hackathon so they create an AI that does all of that for you. Um, <laughs> maybe there's an AI out there that can spot the copyrighted works and, and create the remuneration key <laughs> for them. <laughs> Who knows? But um, I'm, I'm very grateful for you to have uh, shared this with us. And I hope that after the 15th of April, it, your office is renowned for its transparency and its willingness to go for better regulation all the time. Yeah. So I know that I, I hope that we will hear the developments as they come out and that we will yeah. be able to continue reporting on them.